the crack in segment of the show and things were looking great the last few weeks i'll tell you that um you know you go off from that long break with the all-star break and then the bye week for the Kraken, and it was just kind of tough you were hoping everybody was kind of sitting on pins and needles like these guys need to get back into action they need to reinsert themselves into the wild card hunt um and then the few games that they got immediately out of that break after losing the game against the san jose sharks right before the break falling to the flyers you know uh and then falling to the new jersey devils to begin things here and you're like, uh oh, you know, are, is, is it over? Are they going to have to sell at the deadline? Is this season a wash? You know, are they going to have to start moving on from some fan favorites from the expansion draft? Uh, that February 12th loss at the New Jersey Devils, a one to three decision. Our player of the game, defenseman Will Borgen, who scored the only goal of the game for Seattle one goal, one point, one shot, and four hits. Seattle really just not able to generate enough until it was too late. Uh, some mistakes ultimately lead to New Jersey's goal goals, um, and it's just another loss to add to it that you know Seattle couldn't do enough offensively, which has been a, a decent theme throughout the course of the year. So after that loss to the Devils, which is the first game of a back-to-back, -back, you're wondering, are they going to be able to pull themselves out of it? Can they get back into it? They've lost some ground in the wild card hunt. They were closer to it when we got to the break, and they could have been even closer at the break had they beaten the Sharks, but they didn't do that. It just There wasn't a lot of good happening with this team. We get to the second game of a back-to-back, -back, and back-to-backs are tough, man. I mean, you think about that. You know, the Kraken didn't look great offensively against the Devils. Are they going to be able to do it against the Islanders? It was stressful, but they were able to beat the New York Islanders by a score of 2-1 to one in the shootout. So it was a 1-1 one to -one game. We go into the shootout, and the Kraken beat the Islanders. Uh, it was a tough one. This was Philip Grubauer's first game since, I believe, it was December 9th. Uh, so it was a great performance from Gruby to show up there. He was perfect in the shootout. He stonewalls the Islanders. He makes 26 saves. He is our key player of the game. 26 saves, a 963 save percentage, perfect in the shootout. Um, and the Kraken win this one. Matty Benier scores the lone goal in regulation for Seattle. He gets slammed into the boards pretty hard. Um, it looks like he was going to be hurt. and He was going to have to leave the ice. Uh, the puck goes down to the Kraken end of the ice. Um, Jared McCann is ultimately able to find Matty on the other end of it because he sees that this play is happening and Benier scores uh, to give the Seattle the early lead. Kyle Palmieri scored the New York goal on a power play that was kind of a soft penalty call against Yanni Gord. Um, and so it ties this one up. So this game probably couldn't have even... I uh, shouldn't have even gone to overtime and then the, the shootout itself, but that's not how these things go. Um, we go to the shootout. Um, i trying to see if I can find the shootout order here, but Philip Grubauer was perfect into it. Uh, Tomas Tatar, yes, Tomas Tatar scored the only goal for the Kraken in the shootout. Uh, Matty Beneers missed his shot. Jordan Eberle missed his shot. Um, and then let's see here. Yes, Oliver Wallstrom had his shootout shot stopped. Bo Horvat has his. And then Matthew Barzal, former Seattle Thunderbird Matthew Barzal, uh, who's got all the talent in the world, would love him in Seattle uh, as a Kraken, uh, back in Seattle that would be, um, had his shot stopped by Grubauer and the Kraken to get both points. Uh, they kind of revived themselves a little bit, but they were facing a tough test to end out the week a few days later. February 15th at the Boston Bruins. Boston, you know, they win the President's Trophy last year. They had a historic season last year. Couldn't turn it into a Stanley Cup, and a lot of folks kind of expected them to fall off. They haven't really done that, um, but it doesn't really matter to Seattle. It's a tough team still, and you need to continue to find your way back into the wild card hunt. Seattle goes into Boston. They do give up the first goal as David Pasternak cleans up a messy play in front of the crease uh, of Joey Decord. And the Kraken score the final four goals unanswered uh, to win this one. It's a big win. They close out that road trip, that four-game road trip back from the All-Star break with four points in those two games. 
Our player of the game number one is for Matty Beneers. One goal, two assists, three points, a three plus minus, one shot, and one hit. So the uh, one of two guys from that sort of area is able to make a massive impact. The other guy who did was Joey Decord, our second player of the game. 36 saves and a 973 save percentage. Truthfully, Seattle got some luck in this game. Uh, the Bruins hit a few pipes uh, and just narrowly missed a few goals, but they won't ask you how they got the win uh, it's just the fact that they did get the win and it adds two more points so it was kind of it was frustrating it was frustrating you know that San Jose game we talked about obviously that one at length the Flyers game as well was a frustrating one the Devils one it was just it was getting tough to watch it was like okay they're going to have to sell it just seemed like how this team was trending how it was looking um it was tough. And then, you know, especially even going into that game against the Islanders in the back to back, the Islanders haven't been particularly great this season, um, but you still didn't really have the best feeling uh, considering how they had performed the night, performed the night before. It's the back of back, back to back. Players are going to be tired. Uh, Seattle goes out and, you know, they kind of grind it out. You know, again, it shouldn't have had to go to overtime. It shouldn't have had to gone to a shootout. Um, but they get the two points. They don't sit and they don't mope about it. Uh, and then they go into Boston and beat the Bruins by three goals, which is you know not an easy feat to accomplish, even if it was their third loss in a row uh, and knocked them out of first place in their division. So it's a big win, and it gives you some momentum going into what is, I believe, nine games left. Um, nine or eight games before the trade deadline, the final day of the trade deadline. So uh, it'll be big. And we've got a piece of team news that kind of relates to the trade deadline. So we'll go over a few different other things. On the 13th, Ford Pierre at Ward Belmar was activated off injury reserve. Uh, so he's back. He has been practicing in full with the team, but he has not gotten back into the lineup just yet. Uh, and then Brian Dumoulin, defenseman Brian Dumoulin, was hurt in the game against the Devils um, on a back check. It was kind of like one of those butt checks where the skater checks backwards. Uh, and Dumoulin kind of took the worst of it sent him into the boards he left that game immediately and was ruled out pretty quickly with a lower body injury he would miss that game against the islanders with that lower body injury but did return against the bruins so and he's been back practicing with the team as well so nice that you avoid any injury this is one of those few times over the course of this year that the kraken have been fully healthy knock on wood i don't have to deal with any more of those injuries um so we get to it on the 12th uh, Elliot Friedman of Hockey Night in Canada. He breaks a lot of different news um, around the NHL. Had a quote in his 32 Thoughts podcast that kind of breaks down different you know, pieces of news and rumors throughout the entire NHL. Uh, he said, I think that the Kraken take a run at trying to sign him. We'll see where that goes, but I would be surprised if they didn't at least try to sign him first. This is regarding Jordan Eberle. Uh, a few of the veteran forwards for the Kraken have been rumored throughout, you know, the NHL ahead of the trade deadline, especially when the team has struggled. It's been Jordan Eberle. Alex Wenberg has also been in some of those talks, uh, considering the need for defensive centermen throughout the course of the NHL. Uh, Justin Schultz is also a guy who's garnered some potential interest. Uh, but Jordan Eberle is interesting. Uh, to hear from Friedman that the Kraken might say, hey, we're going to sign you to a longer-term deal. Oh, well, probably not longer-term. We're going to sign you because he's a free agent after this year. Uh, Eberle, before this season started in the preseason, he expressed his interest to stay in Seattle. He says he does want to be here. And he had made that intention clear to the front office. Um, I don't know if there's any stock to take of it, but on Sunday's practice, uh, he was seen with his daughter, uh, and his wife at practice uh, and brought his daughter into the team meetings. Uh, so did Brian. Well, Brian Dumoulin's kid was at practice and Brian, Pierre Edouard Belmar's kids were at practice as well. Uh, so I don't know if there's anything to take sock into, but it's interesting to think about. Uh, Jordan Eberle's 1000th game would also be during the month of March, just after the trade deadline. So there's it's, it's going to be a strenuous uh upcoming few weeks for Kraken fans as they worry about the trade deadline and, and just for the results as well. I mean, we look here at the upcoming schedule and that'll include this upcoming week that we'll talk about. So we'll, we'll talk about the upcoming week, obviously, but looking past that week, you'll have to play the Bruins again at home. Uh, you'll play the Penguins who you lost to on a road trip. 
Um, and then there, there's a three more games. There's three games in the month of March uh, before the deadline date, which is March 8th. You have to play the Oilers, who you've struggled against throughout the course of your existence. You have to play the Flames, who uh, are above you in the playoff seating, and the Winnipeg Jets, who have been one of the best teams in the NHL. So it's not at all going to be an easy stretch for the Kraken as they try to climb themselves back into the playoff picture. But, I mean, I didn't really expect them to beat the Bruins, truthfully. So, you know... Uh, we'll look at here the upcoming games for Seattle, which aren't easy either. But you look at that early start to March, Edmonton on the 2nd, Calgary on the 4th. It's a back-to-back. They play the Jets on the 5th on the road. They have a few days before their next game on the 8th, which is trade deadline day, which is also against the Jets. So the month of March does not start off very um, easy for the Kraken. They also played the Knights uh, twice in that month. You'll play the Stars. The Predators are also in the hunt. So it's not going to be easy whatsoever. Uh, but, again, the, they kind of have found some some life in the last few games and the wins against the Islanders and the Bruins. So maybe they're able to keep that going. So we look ahead. Uh, by the time that you're seeing this, this game will have happened. It is uh, the 19th versus the Detroit Red Wings. It is a 12.30 p.m. start because of President's Day. Uh, this game is on ESPN, so be aware of that. It is on ESPN. It is not on Root Sports. So if you go to Root Sports looking for it, I cannot help you. Um, 12.30 p.m. Pacific Time puck drop. It is also Lunar New Year night for the Kraken, uh, and we'll show you the Kraken S logo and the anchors specially designed there. They obviously can't wear this in warm-ups because of the NHL's decision this past offseason, so frustrating, obviously, uh, but really cool to see the design here. We'll look at a few different things. Artist Julia King Robinson. Unique vision was inspired by the dragons in Korean art from the Joseon dynasty and motivated by her kids' enthusiasm about this partnership with the Kraken, which is very nice to hear about. Um, they'll have some some fun stuff for Lunar New Year night. Uh, the Mac Fi Kung Fu Club at pregame and intermission. Uh, in arena DJ is DJ Sopagi. And the anthem singer is young Yolanda Lee, Lo, he, Yolanda Yee, who we've actually seen at a few different events, notably Mariners. So that is on the 19th. The Red Wings as well. They're not going to be an easy team to beat. They've had a really strong, uh, strong year as well. February 22nd. This is all at home, by the way. February 22nd versus the Vancouver Canucks is a 7 o'clock start. Vancouver, they've been one of the best teams in the National Hockey League um, as well. So that's not going to be an easy one. The Kraken already beat the Canucks up in Vancouver early in the year. So it's going to be another fun rematch. Again, Vancouver has been really great this year. Quinn Hughes has been one of the best players in the uh, in the entire league. And then on February 24th versus the Minnesota Wild, which is on that Saturday, um, the Kraken will play the Minnesota Wild uh, at home. And it won't be just any game as the Kraken will be wearing their winter classic jerseys the first of two times outside of the winter classic itself that they'll be wearing these jerseys the other time is march 24th against the montreal canadians at home so that'll be fun uh to see that uh see the winter classic jerseys back in action as well minnesota they're a team that's trying to push for the playoffs in the western conference as well so none of these games are going to be easy for the kraken as they look to get back into the playoffs and they look to push further and further up the wild card standings so